What's up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we're coming at you each and every week with a fresh weekend of debrief in an effort to send biblical truth. And what better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm one of your hosts, Caleb Pearson. Uh, joining me in the host spotlight, the man, the myth, the Mark Francis. Marky Mark, how you host doing, buddy? Spotlight. How it's the whatever, you? dude. I, I never the know. Whatever. I never know what I'm going to say. You, that though, with your Santa hat. Tis are, the season, are right? Out. Yeah. And we've got our. Uh, Upgraded studio here. We put twenty-eight flakes. seconds of forethought into the set. <laughs> yeah, roses. But, but it all goes full of stuff. to the amazing work that went on behind the scenes for the stage yeah. um, setup. It it's good, just it's brother. fun. It's cool. I mean, people were like, "It looks amazing." How did you do that? And it all goes to Rose Lock and her creativity. And then she has a few minions behind the scenes that do it. Um, I, I wish I could take credit for it, but I can't. So is, does F3 get decked out for Christmas? What's the vibe down yeah, there? Yeah, absolutely. It's like a miniature stage. Mm. Everything about yeah. it is, is just replicated for downstairs, and you should come check it out. because Well, Hannah's, Hannah's singing this weekend yeah, down there, I think, so I'll It'll be there. Be it's come, exciting. Come check it out. Uh, he's with us. You see him. You're about to hear him. Uh, Tim Sanford. Tim, how you doing, my man? I'm doing good, too. Your so shirt inspired all up? of this, by the way. Okay. You started out the Christmas first. little Christmas. Yeah. How do I do what? What are you going to say? How do you come up with the man, the myth, the, you know, all this? No, no, no. no. Stuff. It's all. It's all in his crazy brain. <clears throat> well, I don't know where yeah. the man, the myth, the, that's just something my dad always said. Yeah. The man, the myth, the legend. I don't know if that's a pop culture I thing. Know. Or somebody it, gave yeah. me. Isn't that a thing? Somebody yes. gave me like an office desk, like a name tag that they gave that to me for Christmas. And it's in my office at home. So I don't know if you've ever seen that or not, but it actually, that. That's phrase what it says. exists that's in my dope. house. You should bring it, bro. That's, I will. That's sick. I'll do that. It's also, it's also easier when there's only one mark here. But. Yeah. Guys, let's jump into a Sunday in review. Uh, and do not be afraid, anybody. You know what I mean? So yeah. as we do this Christmas series, we're, we're focusing on some phrases. Uh, I appreciate it, Tim, the way you uh, explain that and the worship team and all that good stuff. Uh, so Mark, let me come your way first. You've yeah. been in these planning meetings. We're here now, yeah. this, this Christmas time. Well, I've been excited uh, to, to get into these words. Mm-hmm. So we're doing a little bit of a play on words with yeah. John 1. The Word yes. became flesh. He is the true Word. Mm-hmm. But yet in the sermon series, we're looking at some key phrases, some key words that occurred during this birth of Christ season, if you want to call it that. And um, and how can we learn from that? So I'm stealing some of your thunder, the explanation, no, Tim. It's great stuff. But the, the idea of do not be afraid. Um, I love how you gave a little bit more added depth to that of mm-hmm. how they were currently afraid many of them were and it's like so stop do not fear don't worry you have this ability to to have fear or not fear in right. this moment right and they they're all cowering they're you know but what are their reactions and i think <clears throat> that's part of the conversation yeah. that we can look at today is how do we learn from this and how can we either um, respond like Mary or respond like Zachariah yeah, and and how do we <laughs> do do right. we have this continued fear in our lives and how do we overcome that because that's that's the key question mm-hmm. how does anybody overcome these challenges yeah. of fear yeah here's what I appreciate from this whole Christmas series thing there's a I always have been on staff for five six years now whatever I always have this intrigue over okay what is the pulpit going to cover in December that isn't just the the Christmas story mm. again because mm. I I think it can be easy to kind of copy paste or have a cookie cutter you know Christmas yeah. time mm-hmm. presentation. But what does it look like to to raise the value of Scripture e- even so uh, in all that? And and so I appreciate that direction that that these teams took and and the way you started with this, you know, a, a lot of good stuff in there. That whole is that a word st- study, Tim, that gets you from do not be afraid to really understanding that it's saying. Do not be afraid anymore, compared to what it immediately reads as. Because I feel like you read it, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. I need to make sure I'm never afraid. But this yeah. is actually saying I'm meeting you in your state of fear, and then saying yeah. no more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where did yeah. that come from? How do you get? Just, just like you're saying, yeah. just studying out, like yeah. digging out the terms and digging sure. out the tenses and this kind of thing. And mm-hmm. I find those to be intriguing because. Uh, I have learned over the years that they make a difference, just like what we're talking about with this. It's not don't be afraid, like like stiffen up here, but hey, you're afraid, stop that, right? Mm-hmm. And if you know that, then it for me, anyways, it changes a little bit, right? Sure. So I think sometimes when we use that term afraid, we use it like I'm quaking in my boots. Well, that could be, but it's not always that. It's it's we talked about anxiety. We talked about 
like uh, there's there's let's say there's levels of fear maybe I don't know or different ways that that's being expressed. Sometimes it's a phobia where it controls, and then obviously that's in control rather than the spirit of God being in control of our lives. Our our thinking needs to align with what God says, or we run down fearful uh, ways of thinking about that. So there's all kinds of nuances and aspects to it that I think really speaks to our hearts and lives. But you mentioned in, in the sermon that like when you're confronted with the scene, if you were in, if we were one of those shepherds or what are we going to do? We're going to awesome, fall and drop yeah, down yeah. on our face. <clears throat> right. But that's in with kind of falling in line with confronting with an angel. Uh, you, you didn't really touch on those other passages in scripture where somebody's confronted with, whether it be Moses right. or Isaiah uh, of the, that just dropped down to your knees. I'm who am I? I mean, right. I'm nobody right. kind of person response, you know, and then it, it's not quite a confrontation with God, but it's this confrontation with just this awesomeness of the message of what's being right. communicated to them. And I think also probably the, the form of what, what happened yeah. of just the appearance yeah. of an angel coming to speak. Yeah. Eyes like fire. That's that's a little scary. Angelology, right. man. Yeah. Weird stuff. Yeah. And it, it would instill fear. And so it's just fascinating. Well, and, to... and in that study, like you'll find those same words for fear being used applying to the Lord. Like there's the fear of the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so really it's, in my mind, it's so much uh, like what am I afraid of? There is a fear of the Lord. And it's not quaking in my boots in that sense, but it is a reverential awe. We will dive to our face for sure with him, right? Like mm -hmm. there will be, every knee will bow. So there's a, there's a view or perspective of God, I think that draws that out of the heart. But then when you see some of these others, like, okay, Zacharias, he, he had the opportunity in that moment to be awed by this angel, but yet then just like Mary saying, okay, if that's the way you say, that's what we're going to believe God for. Versus how can this be? And now doubting and disbelieving. And when fear, I think, takes us into that, or no, I shouldn't say it that way because that's not accurate. When we let fear take us into that mm -hmm. and we choose not to believe as opposed to um, succumbing to our, to our you know, fears there. I think that's where he's correcting us then on that stuff, right? And showing us that this is not, this is not right. That's not healthy right. to, to, to live in this fear. And so right. calling them out instantly to say, you know, do not be afraid is, yes, calming and reassuring. Yeah. But it's also, it's a call to action to say, okay, this nothing about this should be causing you anxiety or fear. Right. This is a message of good news. This is something right. that's going to bring you hope and joy and, yeah. and peace. And so, yeah. I, I, there is what you're kind of reading into it is like they could have easily just stayed in that fear. They right. could have stayed in yes. that, in that anxiety. Yeah. Using that word. Yeah. To, to then not hear the message. Yeah. Or to, to run away. Yeah. Because each time the angel, when he said, "Don't be afraid," he said, "This is what I'm here for. This I'm going to give you good tidings of great joy. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have a child. I'm going to tell you something here that is absolutely a." Uh, a, a wonderful message. So you're you're seeing me and you're recognizing that this something's awesome going on here. You're diving to the ground. You're in fear. I'm saying if you continue in that, you're not going to hear what I'm having to say to you and you're not going to rejoice in that and you're not going to glorify God in that. So you need to stop that, hear what I'm saying to you, and then your response needs to be one of believing God for that, right? Mary does it so be it then to me, right? There's that kind of thing that happens. And again, I look at that and I say, you know, for some of us, it's almost like we have to eliminate any kind of fear that's ever in our life. No, it's what do I do with that fear? Sometimes I can come in like a flood. Hmm. All of a sudden we hear the news of, you know, a loved one's had a car accident and guess what? We, we're running down in our minds with hmm. all kinds of belief that may not even be true. So the word of God says, well, wait, you're supposed to think on things that are true, not on things that are untrue. Bring that thought into captivity. And when I do, that fear that I have like begins to dissipate and I have the opportunity to either continue to trust God or go back into that way of thinking, yeah, but what if this and what if that? And, and I can get to the hospital all worked up and only to find out that the information wasn't true. They had a fender bender and they got a bloody nose on it. You know, like, like it's just all out of proportion. And it's not whether it's 
accurate or not, even information, it's ultimately, you know what, God, you know. When when Jairus, when the servant came to Jairus and said, hey, dude, your daughter's, she's died now. Don't bother the master anymore. Like that, it didn't go from she's just sickly to now dead in the Lord's like, hey, that's out of it, right? Like that's, now we've crossed the line. That's all under his control. So the circumstances, Jairus could have trusted him and it seemed like he was wanting to trust him by coming to him. But then there was the piece of news that took him kind of over the edge, so to speak, and the Lord had to address it. He's very gracious, isn't he? He is gracious, and it's cool to see the all these examples of a of a scary type of encounter, but the Lord's actually saying, communicating through through the angels, don't be afraid, yeah. because He could say, "Yeah, go ahead, be afraid." Like I think we in our spiritual walk can be. I I know people, Tim that are terrified of God and, and scared of the judgment seat of Christ. Mm-hmm. Believers. Yeah. I know people who are living the Christian life, but, oh, you better believe he's a bully on the throne with a microscope. But he, he does all this, and these freaky-looking angels could have said, you can be as scared as you want. Go do it. <laughs> right? We think the way yeah. we think that's how God talks yeah. us, but they came and said, do not let fear be a, the fear is not going to be a part of the equation. Yeah. Do not be afraid and then believe. And so, as you were unpacking all that, and I'll be honest, as you started unpacking this stuff, I was like, I was like, I don't know. Tim seems to be making a lot of like statements that I didn't immediately see in scripture. Here's an example of that. Uh, Luke, whatever, uh, one eighteen, Zechariah said, "How can I be sure of this?" You tied his response to one of doubting, and at, when I first read it, I was like. Give the guy up. Cut the cut him some yeah. slack. Yeah, who wouldn't have asked that question? Who, who wouldn't have asked that question? Yeah. But but you, <clears throat> what you did was so well in the sense that you got me to where I needed to be with scripture in this example is you compared it to the other responses. Mm. And I'm even reading some of the other translations. And yeah. Luke 18 says, How can I be sure of this? Right. So you're right. That there was an element of his heart that says, I don't understand in my mind, I still think like he didn't fully understand it, and so he wasn't interested in believing either. He, he, how can I be sure of this? I'm old. There was a me focus. Mm-hmm. There was a doubting mm-hmm. of God, but there was also a yeah. me focus in right. the response. Right. So I think you nailed it. You're absolutely right. Like, I was convicted in the sense that, like, oof, <laughs> I think I respond Luke one eighteen ish in my yeah. life quite yeah. a bit. Reading into um, it of, oh, give the guy a break. You know, that, that could have yeah. been me. Yeah, but, yeah. Hey, yeah. You know. I've, do- I've done that all the time. <laughs> How can I be sure of this? Uh, I'm going through this. I need to understand yeah. this. Yeah. But what the Lord is trying to communicate is you need to not freak out and you need to believe in me and go do it or, but you know, the whatever it is. beauty of that story, which you didn't have time to cover, is how it concludes mm-hmm. and how he comes out. And once John is born, his name will yes. be John. You said that. But then yes. he goes on. He's filled with the Holy Spirit, prophesying yes. and saying, blessed be the Lord God of it's Israel. Beautiful he has read. visited us. Yeah. And just continue yes. on in that. I mean, it's very yes. similar to Mary's response. So yep. there is yep. there is just a, a really cool redemption Redemptive, component yeah, sure. of that. That's good. Where you see his complete Zachariah's yeah. just progression and maturity and growth. And like you said, he's probably the supposedly the most mature one of all of these people. Right. What God does through that right. to bring Himself even more glory is great, and it's cool. Even through His doubt, even through His mm-hmm. fear, even through His anxiety and His questioning. Yeah. Um. So yeah. don't be discouraged out no. there because we are going to go through oh, those yeah. times. Yeah. And yeah. God will still use it for He's His glory. He's not shaking the bony finger at yeah. him with this, right? Like, the, because if you remember the parts that we did read, it said that He and Elizabeth were righteous, right? Like. They were spoken, I think it's good and righteous or something like that anyways. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not talking slouches. We're not talking people who are nominal in their walk with the Lord. We're talking people who are, they're trusting him for, they're asking him for a child. Like these kinds of things are are happening. But um, he, he chooses in that moment, which is a temptation for every one of us. Just because I react well this time doesn't mean I'll react well this time. Just because I'm maturing in this doesn't mean that now I've got this all handled. No, I have to continue to trust God all the time. And he serves as a wonderful example to us, I think, of failure, but yet God is so gracious with us, helps us to see what he's wanting us to see, and then moves us forward in the next moment, right? Like, let's just keep going, kids. I'm not dragging you through all this stuff and shaking the bony finger at you. I want you to see. The the truth of the matter is, is that we have the wonderful privilege of living fear-free. We do, because we have the Savior with us. But when we fail to remember that, 
then we are tempted to to go down these paths, right? And Caleb, you said it. There's you have friends who live in this fear, fear of God. I I people in my community group I've had conversations with years ago that have had similar instances of just not a not a proper yeah. view of God right. sure. and not knowing the true full counsel of who God is and his character to where there is this fear, not just of God, but right. then that translates into fear of everything else within your life, which right. which did come up this weekend. And, and I think it's worth talking about. You, you mentioned these phobias, yeah. the illustration yeah. of the phobias, the anxiety. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. my demographic especially, man, th this mental health crisis, the spike in anxiety and, and whatever you want to call it. It pe you peaked a lot of 20 year olds ears when you started unpacking some of that stuff it's not that we weren't listening before yeah. but what it was like he just jumped and this is I just love sermons but when he I was like okay I, I, I was like I was like Tim is doing this he has everybody's attention he, he, he's talking about how they weren't they did not need to be afraid of the angels how is he gonna jump to application without any notes without yeah. he's, just, he's yeah. just flying yeah, yeah, yeah. His pants. yeah. no going. you know where yeah. you're going baby. Yeah. you know, uh, I know. I know. and so I, I appreciate it so much to like okay the application then and and you were I appreciate how boldly you said I haven't seen an angel and if any of you have let's chat you know I appreciated that so what's the application then well, the application is how, in what ways are we afraid, which we need not be. Right. And he brought up the example of the phobias and the anxiety. So what, what was it like for you to hear that? People you know, you've raised kids. What, what, how do we handle this anxiety epidemic that the world seems to continue to wrestle with? And, and what it's, role does my faith in God have with my wrestle with anxiety, where, whereas otherwise I'm leaning on I don't know. It's not just young people. He said coping mechanisms. I mean, I, right? people who are older, my parents' yes. age, you know, there's there's different fears, yeah. sure, but they're all fears. Mm -hmm. And so how can you address those fears? It just You have to go straight to the heart of God mm -hmm. and his love and then his sovereign hand, which we've touched on recently mm -hmm. here by mm -hmm. digging deeper in Acts. And so there's just that response to say, well, what are you truly fearful of? Right. What are you fearful of that God doesn't have control over? He has control over it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how can you, again, use that phrase, how can you give that to the Lord? Or how can you, you know, allow God to work in your heart in a way that you're putting your trust in Him and not mm -hmm. that fear? Mm -hmm. And it's challenging. Yeah. You can say it, it but is. through the power of the Spirit. You yeah. know, he's given us, like you said, He's given yeah. us the ability not to have any fears, right. but yet here we all still are mm -hmm. with fears. Right. And with coping mechanisms to handle them. And so, so my mind goes to, what about the Christian that has wholeheartedly embraced a, a, a coping mechanism for their anxiety or mm. their fear, or yeah. they've made room for it, yeah. or right. they've placed their identity in their phobia, or or I am anxious, I, I have anxiety, right? Mm. These are these are normal statements, but when when you and you unpack this just a little bit this weekend, when you measure them biblically, <laughs> it's hard to wrestle with. Well, and that's what you that's what you have to wrestle with, and there's where the conclusion of that matters, right? Mm -hmm. I, am I going to believe what God says, or am I going to follow after either the world's philosophy or how I feel? Like anxiety, for example, I've had people say that that's not a sin, that's just the way I am, that's just who I, that defines me kind of thing. And I say, well, as long as you will continue to believe that, Hmm. then you'll never be trusting God for freedom from it, right? Because you've embraced it. Hmm. Well, that means that you could live the rest of your life with that kind of a limp, if you will, right, <laughs> right. In, in, in your walk. But God has the abundant life that's available for you. Perfect love casts out fear, right? So there's something that's missing here in your understanding because truth sets you free. And it's not just knowing about the facts. It's knowing this is what God says is true. And I'm going to count on that. Just like I did for salvation, I counted on what he said. I'm satisfied with what my son did. Will you be satisfied? If you'll count on that, that's for you, salvation, right? It's the same kind of thing. Our sanctification works on the same principle. What mm -hmm. God says about these things, we're going to have to decide. The unfortunate thing is, is it seems like the world uh, megaphone is very loud in our lives. Right. And it seems like the church, by and large, I'm talking the greater <laughs> church in America, is not speaking on these things. We're not studying them for ourselves. So we... We've bought into that, and that's where we live. And so mm -hmm. really, the, the next best thing, if you will, is the coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So I get it. I understand why. 
But as in all cases, if we follow what the Lord says about things, he provides the right answer. Everything else is just a pseudo answer to that and could bring some level of relief, but not the settledness of the heart, right? And then you're at this point of, it's almost a, a question of an operating system, right? Like my smartphone has an operating system. It can't operate outside of that. If, if, if we look at our relationship with the Lord to such a degree that it's foundational to the way we're processing everything, that's very different from, from being conformed to the patterns of this world right. and then dragging ourselves and our families to church once a week because, because we know there's a God up there. Yeah. I just think that's the difference because I think a lot of people <clears throat> drag themselves to church a couple times a month because we know there's a God up there. I believe in him. Yeah. I know he's real. So I got to do this thing. Yeah. And people that do that tend to rely on everything else the world is providing. For an example, the news will give you the anxiety and then the advertisements around the news will give you the coping mechanism. So that's just a vicious yeah. cycle. The news yes. will say, yeah. the news will say, here is the next yeah. end of the world, and then the advertisement on the break will be like, here's how to deal with it. Buy this, and it will make you happy. Right, right. It'll fix and your, so, if that's your, your operating sense. system, yeah. <laughs> if that's your operating system, and you are a twice a month churchgoer, it's going to be an uphill battle the whole time, because uh, I, I've talked with our, our teens about it. Sometimes we want to put a Band-Aid on a stab wound, right? Sometimes the, yeah. the world offers these symptoms, but there's a heart of the matter that that this kind of thing brings right away. Yeah. Their encounter yeah. with an angel, they're on their knees, they're freaking out. What better way to get to the heart of the matter very quickly with an encounter yeah, like puts that? Right. Put it right do, do not be afraid. Yeah. Do not be yeah. afraid. Do not, yeah. be afraid. Do right. not fear. Like yeah. that. Yep. You have that. Choice. You have every reason yeah. to be scared out of your wits. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you not to. Like, and, yeah. Or maybe even to say it more correctly, mm -hmm. you have every every human reason sure. to do that, right? Uh -huh. Like yeah. apart from God, you have every reason. It makes total sense to <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah. But but when you bring God into the equation, the uh -huh. the reversal in total should be happening too. Right. Because, again, if, if, if we had God right here with us and we saw him in all of his glory and power, we'd be fearful because of the fear of God. But the event that's affecting us. Right. It, it, it's like having I mean, it's better than this. Right. But it's like I remember when I was a, a, um, a ninth grade, I think it was. And I was in the football, you know, high school football. And I had a 12th grader who was looking out for me. I wasn't afraid of anybody on that team. But all my buddies were because they were the lowly ninth graders, right? Uh -huh. And they were going to get picked on. I had one guy pick on me, and this dude came over. Hey, you know, and he, could, and he grabbed him and slammed him to the ground, which is not the appropriate thing. <laughs> but nobody messed with me from that time <laughs> on, right? So yeah. I, it, we've got a better, we have a big brother yeah. that's better than some senior 12th yeah. grade bully, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Like, amazing. But I want to read yeah. this here. This is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And he says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. So he's making an admonition to the believer that they should no longer, this is this, like, stop doing this. You're walking mm -hmm. to stop it. No longer walk just like everybody else does, right? And where is that at? In the futility of their mind. Something is happening in their thinking. They wouldn't do that if they didn't think that thinking was good, right? Mm. So this philosophy of the world, because in this world system, all falls under the evil one. So the philosophy of this world seems to be such a right way of thinking that everybody embraces it. And he's saying, but that's futility is what that is. That's coming to naught, to nothing. So don't be like them. Stop doing that and not functioning in the futility of our mind. So whenever we're embracing the, the thinking of the world that doesn't line up with what the word of God says, that needs to be brought into captivity. No, that's not right way of thinking. So he talks about perfect love casts out fear. Well, if I know that I'm perfectly loved by God, right, that's going to negate that. It's going to cast that out. If I am loving God in return, guess what? That's also going to negate that because I'm realizing, you know, I this could be coming at me, but I have a loving God who cares for me and is going to orchestrate and work through my life, and I'll trust you for this. I'm not saying that's easy. 
because there's growth that, that is necessary for that kind of stuff. But if we never are challenged in it, then are we going to actually grow in that to see some of that begin to change in our lives? Mm-hmm. And, and that passage comes on the heels of what it looks like to walk in the Spirit and how we're alive with Christ and all yes. the blessings and things that He's right. given us. Right. Ephesians 1, right. all the benefits oh, we have yeah. with the Spirit and how yeah. he's been, we've been sealed and marked yeah. with Him. So it all comes... That's not the directive, and we say this at FBC all the time, but we need to be reminded of it all through the power of the Spirit, giving us the ability yes. to have that walk and mm-hmm. to make those decisions yeah. to yeah. not walk in futility, but yeah. walk this direction. Yeah. So it, if, it, if that was first in passages, it would be like, we're set up for doom, <laughs> set up right. for failure. Right. But it comes on the heels of what God has done for us through yeah. Christ, through the Spirit. Now we have the ability to go that direction, right. to... Do not fear to not be anxious. Yeah. And that's, you can say that about anything. You can. You just take, walk by the Spirit. Yep. There you go. Yep. But how do you do it? And it's, that's yeah. the challenge too. Yeah, it is. But, but even in that challenge, we learn more and more, Lord, I need you for this. You're right. I can get the facts straightened out in my head, but the facts alone don't cause me then to make the right choice. Mm-hmm. Lord, I need you for this. And uh, thankfully, again, he's given us his Spirit. Um, and, and he's given us the ability to make those decisions. No wonder he says, let not, let not, like these let mm-hmm. words, right? Like mm-hmm. make those choices that you can. So <clears throat> mm-hmm. he says, you know, he works in us both to will and to do. Uh, the strength that we need, he provides. So he's just abundantly providing for us to be able to do that. The challenge is, is again, it comes back to this thing of belief. Hmm. Don't be afraid, only believe. Do and it's not the some people, oh, I just gotta I got a power of positive thinking kind of mm-hmm. thing. Like I just gotta believe, gotta believe, gotta believe, you know, and, and then there's failure. Well, I must not have believed enough or that kind yeah. of thing. No, it's just a simple yeah. like like Jairus, I know, I know this is breaking your heart. We're going. Keep trusting me. Come on with me. And look what he found. Hmm. A daughter who's sleeping, yeah. <laughs> right? That's what the Lord says. Who now is made awake? That's amazing kind of stuff. And what kind of perspective, how does he grow in his own understanding of the Lord as a result of that? That's what it's about. God's wanting to teach us. I am who I say I am. You can trust me. I'm a good God. And I love you. And you don't have to be afraid of that stuff. It's an amazing study. Finding all this in the Christmas story. Oh, right. Exactly. Yes. Yes. That's cool. That's cool. And the neat thing is, is, I mean, we got four more to go, right? So yeah. we want to look at these different ones. And I think we're going to see, I'm hoping that the Spirit of God will use these to help us to see in each of these that we're talking about, the beauty that surrounds that, the beauty that surrounded that, do not be afraid. But then also like, okay, this isn't just out there and, and, and it's a nice story, but this has actual ramifications into our lives that we can we can trust him just like these four uh, people or shepherds were more than this So give us a sneak peek. Next week, the word is? The word's blessed. Yeah. We're going to see it first with Mary, right? Hmm. What does that look like? It's good. Mark? Yeah. What do you want to What do you want to share? Two things. Yeah. All relevant. The Perfect. first is, is what we have been talking about, the anxiety and the fear. Mm-hmm. And so there's the special December class that starts off yes. this Sunday mm-hmm. and next Sunday. So two weeks in a row. That's it. All you get is two weeks, but you have... Either option of 9 o'clock or 10.45 to go. The whole partnering with parents idea of yeah. how do we assist our kids and the next generation in right. this concept. Because we're not just saying stop being afraid yep. and not giving good thinking that's behind that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, you don't need to register. Just show up. Mm-hmm. This will be hopefully full house. Yeah, don't miss it. Yeah. And then the Christmas season of um, uh, Christmas Eve worship services for us at FBC um, easiest way to put it is a typical schedule for mm-hmm. fellowship on that weekend. So you have Saturday night, five o'clock on the twenty third. So if you want an evening, service, if you need your evening fix. If you need your, need your <laughs> evening Christmas Eve fix. Yeah. Come on the twenty third and call that your Christmas Eve nighttime service. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the other three services on Sunday morning, the two upstairs and the one downstairs, all on the same schedule. So bring your friends, bring your family invite them. It'll still be a very unique, special time, but we will also be um, studying a specific word and phrase yes. as well. So following yep. along with the series. Yep. But, um, you know, I invited people to follow the star this past weekend and mm. several of them showed up. Also invited them to church and a couple of them showed up. Mm. So it, 
in our worship team meeting this morning, we we're talking of just the reminder of being hospitable mm -hmm. in our building. And just, you see something you don't know, yeah. it might be their first time. It might be their 150th time, but who right. knows? Mm -hmm. just, so just as we all are in this building looking around and seeing the hundreds of people swirling around, this season, especially coming on the heels mm -hmm. of Follow the Star, most of all, people will be coming who are seeking and looking. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. you can rest assured that what what is being presented in the worship services will be Christ on display. Mm -hmm. And um, that'll be the focus on any given Sunday. Mm -hmm. But here in December, you can just trust, invite people. Yeah, Good mm -hmm. things will be happening yeah. and they'll get the message. So it's yeah. good. Yeah. Mark, thank you, man. You got it. Tim. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, you bet. You the man. As a reminder to our viewers and listeners, you can find us on your favorite podcast platform. Just type in Sermon Spotlight. We pop right up. The fact of the matter, everybody, is that sermons are not meant to just take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love. God bless.